Up next, the beer garden physics demystification of ediths. What are they, how do they work, and what is the benefit? I'm John Cadogan from autoexpert.com.au, the place where Australian new car buyers save thousands off their next new cars. Hit me up on the website for that. I30 Fastback N, one of my favourite performance cars. It has a brilliant e-diff, a computer controlled limited slip differential just stuck in there between the two front drive shafts. What does it do? Well, let's talk about that. What I've tried to do here visually is depict the car as it would maybe sit at least at a snapshot in time in the middle of a corner approaching an apex which would be that witch's hat just there. So the body has inertially rolled over to the right, which is the left-hand edge of your screen, okay? The left wheel, the left side of the car is unloaded somewhat, and the right side is loaded right up. And you gotta think about what's gonna happen here and what's the cornering process. And we're talking about approaching the limit of adhesion. What happens? The mission when you're driving around a racetrack, okay, is to enter the corner as quickly as possible so that you can carry as much speed through that corner as you can. You've got to clip the apex, which is the witch's hat just there, and then as soon as you've clipped the apex, you've got to start feeding the power in. And you've got to do that at the same time as unwinding the steering so that you can carry as much speed through the exit of the corner and then that allows you to start the next straight, however long or short that might be, with as much speed on board as possible. And that means you'll get a higher VMAX on the straight and then you'll be in a position to overtake everyone else. You know, we're in the business of going really, really fast and not crashing. That's how you win races after all, right? So this is exactly where we are at the moment and the apex is literally milliseconds away. So the driver here is going to be thinking about getting on the gas. And if you haven't overcooked it on the way into the bend, you'll be clipping that apex. And the next part of the process is feeding power in. A couple of things have got to happen though, haven't they? Because the car is only halfway around the bend. It has to keep yawing around the bend. So let's say this is a 90 degree turn on a racetrack. So it's a radius 90 degree turn got 45 degrees to go, haven't we, sort of thing. So the car still has to yaw through another 45 degrees. And if you don't know what that is, yawing is that rotation in a horizontal plane, which is what cars do when they go around corners. They actually do two things. They translate themselves from here to there. In this case, the car's translating itself from there to over there, out of shot off on the right-hand edge of your screen. So it's got to translate itself and yaw. And the big problem here is that this wheel is lighter at the moment than that wheel. There's less weight pushing down on this wheel. If you're hazy about weight, weight is actually a force, so it is affected by acceleration. Inertia has a effect on weight, whereas the mass stays the same, okay? If that's doing your brain in, just think about it like this. A brick might weigh I don't know, two kilograms or four or five pounds or something here on planet Earth, holding one in your hand, all right? Its weight is zero on the International Space Station, all right? But if you throw it at someone's head and it hits them, it's going to kill them the same here on Earth as it would up on the space station because of its mass and its momentum and the energy it acquires. They're all functions of the mass, whereas the weight is a function of the acceleration. As the car starts to accelerate around the bend, it rolls. There's more weight on this wheel than there is on this wheel. It's that simple. That means the right-hand wheel of the car has more traction because it's got more weight than the left-hand wheel. And if you get over-enthusiastic on the whole accelerating out of the bend thing, the inside wheel is going to spin. And that's bad because once that wheel starts to spin, it will drop all drive to the right wheel. So. Differentials are fantastic devices, miraculous in many ways, because vehicles would not want to go around bends at all if they lack differentials, which allow those drive shafts to turn at different rates. But the dark side of an open differential would be that it merely allows one wheel to spin and then it drops all drive to the other wheel, which I'd suggest is exactly what you don't want on the way out of a bend. 
So this is one of the things that an e-diff takes care of. And how does it do that, all right? So the beauty of computer controlled anything is you can get as many inputs as you want and that means you can then tailor make the outputs that you want, the response from a system that you want. That's essentially what an e-diff is. It's a limited slip differential and the slip limitation part of it is computer controlled. So the inputs allow the computer to determine when to limit the slip and by how much. So that computer, there's a vehicle dynamics control computer in this car and it does drives various systems. I'd suggest it's probably also having a big say about electronic stability control and ABS and all of that stuff. But when we're talking about the e-diff, it's telling the e-diff what to do. So it's looking at, for example, the speed of the car and the steering angle position and the throttle position and what gear you're in and how much power you're feeding into the powertrain at this point in time. And then it's making a whole bunch of intelligent decisions about how much to clamp this inside left hand drive shaft to constrain that wheel spin. And when that wheel spin is constrained, some really mad physics things happen, right? What happens there is when the wheel would otherwise have been spinning, it is not. So the drive to the right wheel continues unabated and it's got a lot of traction there so it can get a lot of drive to the ground if only the differential allows it. So that's good. And another big advantage here which you may not have considered is that the centre of rotation for your is like driving a crowbar down through the centre of the roof or something. That's how the car is yawing. It's rotating about that vertical axis. When you've got a lot of drive happening on the right hand side here, it makes the car yaw to the left. And we're turning a left hand bend, right? So this left hand yaw that needs to continue for the other 45 degrees of our 90 degree bend, the e-diff is helping that yaw because there's an unbalanced amount of drive happening on the right hand side causing rotation in the plane of yaw about that vertical axis and helping the car get around the bend. So I hope this explanation makes some sort of cogent beer garden physics sense. The one thing I'm going to leave you with though is what does it feel like? And what it felt like for me, I've driven i30N on a track once and I cannot believe how early you can get on the gas after the apex. In many situations in a car with an open diff, if you got on the gas that hard and that aggressive, what would happen is you would just push or understeer off the track. The inside wheel would spin, drive would be lost, and then all hope of winning the race is like over a cliff, like a thousand lemmings in overpopulation mode. So that's bad. The e-diff is like totally freaking ninja when you think about it, because I can't believe how early you can get on the gas in a car with an e-diff that's well tuned. And this certainly is. It's got to be good for, I don't know, tenths of a second per lap. And that may not sound like much. You might not be using the e-diff all that much out there on public roads, but if you buy a car like this with track day aspirations, then that e-diff is just it's just fantastic and I'd, I'd strongly suggest if you own a car like this or you get the chance to drive it, take it to a track at least once and have a play with that because it really does change the character of the car. You won't believe how early you can get on the gas. You won't believe how quick the exits to the bends are. And we, having said all of that, just don't try this stuff too aggressively on a public road. You know, public road, different rules. There are plenty of things you can hit and I'd suggest that you drive well inside your own limits and the limits of the vehicle with a number one consideration in mind of risk mitigation and public safety. But on the track, have a play with it. It is flat out brilliant. If you like this sort of beer garden physics report, let me know in the comments feed below. We can do endlessly these kinds of things. Give me some guidance. Let me know what you want. What sort of topics would you like me to cover? And if you like this report, you might consider subscribing as well and hitting the bell notification icon thing. If you've made it this far, that's all I got for you. Thank you very much for watching.